Welcome to the Certificate Course of Management of Infection and Infectious Diseases. We are on our Module 4 on Viral Infections and we are going to talk about the Human Papilloma Virus. Objectives, we need to know the etiological agent, the clinical features, the diagnosis, management and vaccination. This is a small topic at the outset I can tell you. It's actually gaining importance in recent years as the, frankly speaking, the sexual norms of the um, society have been changing in India, we are becoming more and more cautious because this is an important virus which is implicated in causing genital cancers. And hence, multiple patients or persons who have multiple sexual partners, they are at an increased risk of cervical malignancies because the prime modality of transfer of this infection is sexual contact and it's a vaccine preventable illness so that's what has put it on a forefront so in short about the virus it's a ds dna that is double stranded dna virus which is ecosahedral shaped does not have an uh, envelope its genome is about 8000 bps the most important genes that need to be understood here are the E or the L, that is the early and the late genes. The early genes, typically the E6 and E7 types, are associated with malignant transformations. And L gene, uh, which is the one which codes for major vital proteins of the virus. About 125 subtypes are known and 40 of them are seen in the anogenital tract. So, as I already said, the mode of acquisition is sexual transmission. So, the virus attaches to basal keratinocytes. And for the prevention of infection, the cell-mediated immunity is important for controlling these infections. So, once again, patients who are having disorders of cell-mediated immunity like H1N or that is H HIV patients or your immunosuppressants, patients who are on immunosuppressants, that is your transplant patients or your chemo's chemotherapy patients, they will be again at risk of having this. At the same time, people who are at risk, who are having inherent abnormalities of the cell-mediated immunity will also be at a risk. Protection against infection depends on the neutralizing antibodies. Clinical features of the spectrum of illness of this disease is mainly two, that is the genital warts and genital malignancy. Genital warts or the condyloma acuminata as they are called, you can see that picture with its entire source mentioned down. This is usually caused by the human papilloma virus types 6 and 11. In men, it is seen on the penile shaft and the urethral meatus. Whereas in women, they are usually first at the posterior introitus and on the adjacent labia. Then they will spread on to the vulva and then the vagina and the cervix. So, the external marks are affected first. Warts may even occur on the hands in some patients. So, flesh colored brown exophytic and hyperkeratotic papules. Plantar warts may be specifically painful, that is, the ones which are on the plantar surface of the feet. Flat warts, that is, the Veluca plana. The flat box of the Veruca plana are the most common among children and occur on the face, neck, chest and flexor surfaces of the forearms and the legs. Human papilloma virus and malignancy. Human papilloma virus 16 and 18 are the most common associated with malignancies. Squamous cell cancer namely cervix, cervix vaginal and the anal cancers. This is the most common site of cancers with human papilloma viruses and the subtypes are 16 and 18. A word about human papilloma virus and immunocompromised or HIV in more particular. Immunosuppressed patients, particularly those undergoing tra organ transplantation 
often develop pityriasis verisicolor like lesions from which dna of several hpv types have been extracted occasionally these lesions may undergo malignant transformation pityriasis verisicolor are actually hypopigmented patches like uh, lesions and they may be seen on various parts of the body patients infected with hiv and human papilloma virus now they are often infected with uncommon types that is other than 16 18 6 and 11 other than these frequently they will have severe clinical manifestations of human papilloma virus infections they are at higher risk for the cervical and the anal dysplasias as well as for the invasive cancers human papilloma virus disease in patients with hiv infection may be associated with multiple hvpv types that is the multiple human papilloma virus subtypes it's difficult to treat and it is often recurrent thus in short in hiv patients the subtypes are different the disease is more severe it's more than one subtype so more different manifestations of the disease more difficult to treat and more recurrent what is this word epidermodysplasia verruciformis we seeing that further it's a rare autosomal recessive disease characterized by an inability to control the human papilloma virus infection patients are often infected with unique hpv types a type that usually as associated only with this group they develop cutaneous squamous cell malignancies particularly in the sun exposed areas the lesions resemble warts or macules similar to that of pityriasis verisicolor these are the earlier lesions then full blown what it can look like is this that is the epidermodysplasia verruciformis it looks ghastly what are the complications of human papilloma virus infections itching of the warts with bleeding secondary infections of the warts by bacteria or the fungi large masses of warts may cause mechanical obstruction of the birth canal of the urinary tract Dysplasias of the uterine cancer, cervix are generally asymptomatic until frank malignancy develops. Patients with anogenital human papilloma virus disease are associated with serious psychological symptoms due to anxiety and depression of this condition. So they can be because they are sometimes painful and warts are very, very, very dirty to look. To be very frank. one might definitely have a psychosocial impact because of that how do you treat these warts this is the typical way you would find textbooks telling you about wart treatment one which i or a doctor can administer that is or one which can be used by the patient himself or herself so by the provider you can add, uh, offer them cryotherapy with liquid nitrogen or cryoprobe which is a weekly treatment podophilic resin which is 10 to 25% that is the power of it it has to be given every week for up to 4 weeks a trichloroacetic acid or bichloroacetic acid strength is 80 to 90% that has to be given for every week again for 4 weeks usually a surgical excision may be offered other treatments like intralesionally administered interferon and laser surgeries frankly we don't do any of these in india often and certainly not as a uh, infectious disease specialist some of them like cryotherapy and all may still be uh, offered by the gynecologists but what we are commonly given is the second one that is administered by the patient means we just prescribe a podophylox that is a 0.5% gel of or podoxophylline it is to be applied twice a day for 3 days then give a 4 days gap and then repeat it so repeat again for 3 days such you can repeat for almost a month four times 
another drink uh, another uh, cream is the ime cream mode 5% cream again three times per week but up to 16 weeks vaccination for human papilloma virus two types of vaccinations are uh, available bivalent that is uh, acts against the 16 and 18 that is the uh, genital cancer associated viruses quadrivalent 6 11 16 and 18 These are recombinant vaccines administered 0.5 ml dose intramuscular shot. Three shots have to be given. The first shot is called as the shot zero. The next one is given at the end of one month of the first shot or maximum of two months of the first shot. That is called as the first or the second. That is one or two meaning to say second shot comes at the after first month or after the second month of the shot zero. That is the very first shot. and then you have a shot at the 6 month 6 months after the very first shot of the shot zero so once again first shot is called as shot zero one month or two months maximum up to after the shot zero is your shot second and the third shot is 6 months after the shot zero usually age group is 9 to 26 years efficacy 90% for bivalent and 95 to 98% for quadrivalent thank you